the Fed is not only trying to prop up the housing market, as Sue just detailed for us, but the jobs market, too, of course. Well, today, at least one market strategist is finally seeing some potential for private sector job growth. We're pleased to be joined by Nicholas Colas, chief market strategist at BNY Convergex. Group, Nick, it's great to see you. Good to see you. I read your stuff all the time, your morning notes, and I have to tell you, we're really, really excited to hear you. Your theory today, your, your words are here, potentially, you're seeing potentially explosive force of private sector job growth. So again, talk about this theory, especially with big business. Sure. We looked very hard to find where there could be some dry kindling around to ignite some kind of expansion in the labor force. It's the number one area of concern for both bulls and bears. And getting a handle on where that could come from is really important. So as we went through the list of where there could potentially be some growth, we settled on large companies. They're the ones that have really stabilized their balance sheets, have a lot of cash in the balance sheet as well and could potentially see some incremental hiring if there is enough final demand. What's really interesting about your outlook here is because in past recoveries, right, it's been small business, government at the local level that's driven the job growth and driven ultimately the recovery, correct? And this that's, is different this time. That's absolutely right. This will be a very unusual recovery if it comes through this way because, as you mentioned, small businesses in construction and professional services, they're the ones that have really been the engine of growth in this economy for 20 or 30 years now. It's going to have to be large businesses, though, this time around because, as we know, small businesses have a lot of trouble finding credit and that local governments don't have the wherewithal to make those incremental hires either. Exactly. We're hearing a lot about that lately on so many levels. Now companies though are hoarding this cash, this dry powder, as you alluded to, because they're not that confident, right? We just had the latest University of Michigan confidence number late last week saying there's just a lot of concern about there. So how does that factor in? I mean, could that be one side a critic might point to for your viewpoint here? Absolutely right. I mean, confidence both at the corporate level and individual level is still pretty shaky. At the individual level, Level, it's about jobs. At the corporate level, it's about regulation and what Washington is doing in a lot of major sectors like health care or financial regulatory reform. Until those things get resolved, it's going to be hard, but at the same time, inventory levels are so low that any incremental demand should spark some hiring in the back half of the year. Balance sheets, obviously, of these big companies that we're talking about here, there's a lot of uncertainty about what's coming out of Washington in terms of the health care overhaul. And we just got the Dodd-Frank financial regulatory overhaul. So, you know, those could also put a damper on job growth, no? They could, but the best thing you can say about them is that they're at least done. And come Fair the enough. fall elections, we do have a chance for some change. And as bad as it perhaps is for Washington, Wall Street really likes a gridlock in D.C. where you have the presidential uh, office being held by one party and the Congress being held by the other, which as soon as we're going to get that in the fall. So you're a markets guy. How closely is your outlook tied to the economic data? We're going to get the latest jobs report on Friday. Today, we have a huge rally underway because of good construction numbers, good ISM manufacturing number. What do you think? Yeah, right now the market is about macros. Uh, and the, the jobs number on Friday is going to be a really critical one. The labor markets are the piece of the puzzle that hasn't fallen into place yet. And from Chairman Bernanke's comments this morning, it doesn't seem like Friday is going to be the day when it does fall into place. So we'll be working through these macro issues for the balance of the year. But could Friday be a do or die situation? In other words, it seems like at least the last couple of days, this discussion of double dip has been put aside. Yes, it is a very important point, and it is an important point because we do have a Fed meeting next week as well. So we'll put the context of whatever we hear on Friday into what the, what the Fed has to say on Tuesday. So what do you think? What kind of advice would you give clients here? Would you be putting money here into the stock market? You know, the biggest single positive for the market is that it's not extremely expensive, and corporate earnings did come through pretty well. I do think we have some room to run to the upside over the course of the next month to six weeks because stocks do look pretty cheap. And as long as we don't get hit in the face with a strong double dip worry, over the course of August, which seems unlikely, stocks should be okay for the near term. So should I be buying technology? Should I be buying financials? What do you think? The sector we like most is technology. It's still taking an incremental part of consumer wallets versus virtually any other kind of purchase. What do you think the news today that Droid's overtaking the uh, Apple software? Was that surprising to you in terms of market share? To me, the most exciting thing about the smartphone business is just the energy around it and the enthusiasm that customers have for the products and the innovation going into it. They're creating a brand new ecosystem, and that's great not only for the big companies we're talking about, but for small companies that create all the apps and all the software behind it as well. Great development. I heard one uh, one editorialist or one columnist talk about Apple as an asset class in and of itself. <laughs> I mean, in that respect, and kind of weaving back around here to our initial topic of job creation and job growth, uh, is technology where the innovation really lies and, and where that potential job growth could really emanate from? Well, that would be great. Unfortunately, probably not. A lot of the job growth that you see in technology tends to be overseas. The really creative jobs at the high end do get made here, but it's really a multi 
multiply effect of three or four or five to one to overseas jobs. And, you know, Apple is an asset class of only because it's 20% of the weighting of the NASDAQ. It's a really important stock. All right. Well, Nick, of course, call us. Really important guest to us as always. Nick is the chief market strategist of Confergex Group. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much.